Hey guys, Pizza here again for a quick update on Lu Maoshing DPS PvE build setup. And then if you want a more in-depth PV analysis, you can check out my previous video, which I'll leave the link in the description box and pin it in the comment section. As always, feel free to adjust anything if you have different option available in your account. And now, let's get into it. Now let's take a quick look at my new equipment setup. First, here are the random attributes of my ancient equipment. And then here are my headgears for this build. Again, feel free to adjust anything if you have different options. As for armor card, I'm using hearts card in PSR and Ghost Palace since based on my tests, I think the needed ignore magic death in Ghost Palace is just around 185%. And then I'm switching to Munuk star card in other instances that requires 200% ignore magic death. And then as for the weapon, I don't know what is mistranslated here, but it also increases your magic penetration by 15%. And then here is the shadow equipment side, oracle extract and relic. And then my damage modifiers for this setup are as follows. Magic attack, magic penetration, skill damage increase, magic damage percent, magic damage increase. As for the ignore magic death, again, I'm switching to Munuk's star card for instances that requires 200% ignore death. And then fire damage and water damage. As for arcane rune adjustment, I equip transmission rune instead of tai chi for maximum damage output. As you can see here, it appears that the damage increase from the transmission rune will take effect as long as you use the maximum range of Great Magic Panda Tofu. But note that it's a bit hard to do in instances since the monsters will move towards you. So either use Tai Chi for defensive or transmission for more damage. And then here is my handbook depot just for reference. And now for the Palace of Ghost Demo Run. As always before starting, consume fire controlling alloy, meal bees, and six pieces of original wool juice for maximum damage output. And then buff up Comet Fried Rice for the HP Absorption Shield, followed by Mountain Treasures for the 50% magic damage increase and the 30% cooldown reduction for 10 seconds so that your buffs can cool down fast. Then just spam Magic Panda Tofu. Notice here that I'm trying to go for max range for the transmission rune, but it's a bit hard to do since the MVP is always moving towards me. But don't worry, I tested it out after this run, and turns out you need to be very far from the MVP. But the damage increased to 539k from 503k. And then basically that's all, just be aware of the fire ground skill and move away from it, so make sure you always have HP shield from Comet Fried Rice. And then rebuff Mountain Treasures for the party damage increase. And by the way about the HP shield of the MVP, just continue spamming skills until it's gone so his HP can be damaged again. The instance run lasted for a total of 9 minutes and 68 seconds, so we'll just forward this and head on to the next instance. First for equipment adjustment in Ponope Museum, I switched the armor card to Munak Star card to reach 200% ignore magic death, and then Seed of Idrasil card for the magic lifesteal. As for the relic, I used HP block because honestly speaking it took a total of 23 rerun and lots of item adjustment and getting the right sequence just to finish the instance. Before starting, always buff first, Comet Fried Rice followed by Mountain Treasures. As for food, I used 4 pieces of original wool juice and 2 pieces of Prancha Royal Salad for the anti-fatal. Start at Pakarani's side first, so we could at least chunk an HP before getting disarmed. Also to burst Pakarani so that we could use potions as well as remove the debuffs coming from her. Tip for Magic Panda Tofu, use it in the middle of the MVPs to maximize the AoE damage. But be mindful not to spam the skill too much. Remember to kite from time to time to rebuff Comet Fried Rice and Mountain Treasures for your consistent HP shield and damage increase.
Then after Pakarani and Nuka is defeated, just play around with your skills to survive. Include Crystal Phoenix for the anti-fatal, and then Sea Bream for the invulnerability to your skill rotation just until Nuka's disarm wears off. We'll just forward this because I just juggled the rotation of the sustained skills while waiting for the disarm duration to end. And also just in case don't forget to use pots. Personally, as a magic user in PV, Lu Maoxing is my new go-to magic DPS in instances since he gives good DPS, party buffs, and sustains. Just always rebuff Comet Fried Rice for your party HP shield. Then Treasures Mountain for the 50% damage increase and then 30% cast delay and cooldown reduction to make sure that your party has consistent damage throughout the run. And I think that's all for this video guys. If you have questions or suggestions just comment it down below so I can test more about it. Also don't forget to like and subscribe to stay tuned for more. See you guys again next time and thank you for watching.